master of the amateurs tournament as a springboard back into the big time. The likeable Queenslander has had his share of ups and downs since he won at Royal Birkdale in 1991. But as he told David Bashir in the first part of our special interview, retiring from golf was never an option. Yeah, I think the story sort of really broke a couple of years ago. Baker Finch retires, not playing anymore. But uh, retire, you know, that means a long time. And uh, I'll certainly be playing again sometime. But in my own time, when I feel comfortable, uh, I still feel a little bit um, tense at times out there playing in front of people, in front of the cameras, uh, uh, mainly because I'm not playing as confidently and as well as I know I can play. But still, I go out and have a good time. And I usually shoot around par or maybe a couple under sometimes and enjoy my game. But I'm certainly not intending to come back and play uh, serious golf in the near future. I'm, I'm, as you say, commentating a lot for the ABC network in the States. Uh, I'll be working for Channel 7 this summer, um, doing a lot of course design work. I've got a few courses on the go at the moment. And basically, I'm really happy with, with where I'm going and what's happening at the moment. Will it be a softly, softly approach if you feel like your game is coming back to mm. something like it was? Mm -hmm. Would you look to play a lot more four, mm -hmm. four rounders? Yeah, I, if I can uh, come out and play in these types of events, when I'm home, when I'm not working, and, and uh, kind of gauge where I'm at. And if I feel that I'm playing well enough, I'll go play one or two and enjoy myself, go play a course that I like or, or where I know one of the pros or something like that. The sponsors invite me along, something. But to go and play seriously and try and compete at this stage against uh, the Tiger Woods and David DeVals, I'd be kidding myself. Ian, there's been other great golfers that have uh, suffered career slides. How tough is professional golf compared to other pursuits? Mm, I think everyone that, uh, that suffers a little bit through any, of, any profession would think that theirs is the toughest. I think with golf, you're out there, you're, you're exposed. You're, you're exposed in front of everyone, in front of the cameras, to yourself mainly. Um, you still got to get the job done. There's the ball, there's the hole, you've, you've got to get it in. Uh, when you're bulletproof like Sergio and Tiger, it's easy because they never have any fear thoughts. There's no fear. They just hit it there. They want to hit it there. They hit it there as hard as they can. When you miss a few and when you hit a few bad ones and you get a feeling of uh, needing to perform and, and maybe being a little bit so, like in under glass, it becomes very difficult. Nick Faldo is another example, how he's seeing it now and uh, the world's watching him. It's, a, it's the Faldo watch at the moment. You know, three or four years ago, it was the, the Baker Finch watch. Uh, Greg went through it for a while there in, in 92. You know, Greg Norman was playing poorly for a while and he really felt more pressure then than, uh, than he did when he was playing well and winning all the time because he knew the world was watching him and, and wishing him well. So to answer your question, yeah, I think it is probably tough, tougher than any other sport for that reason that you have no one else to blame. And it's as simple as there's the ball, there's the hole. It, it really, deep down, you should be saying, hey, this is easy. And some days it is. Now, when you stand on the tee after you've just gone birdie, birdie, I stand on the tee and hit it as hard as, as I ever did and, and uh, hit the ball nicely. If you just go on bogey, bogey, or you've hit a couple of bad ones, different thoughts are going through your mind. And uh, it can change from hole to hole. It's not, not even day to day. It's, uh, you know, shot to shot. Well, the recent PGA saw Tiger Woods and Sergio Garcia really shoot it out to the end. Do you think in some ways that signalled a changing of the guard in world golf? Mm, I th yeah, I think it was good to see Sergio coming through, and it... It's an experience watching someone like that play, you know, the exuberance of youth, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> that just, just that, uh, that feeling that he gives you all, that everything's so easy, you know, and it's exactly how Seve was 20 years ago. So Sergio's coming through now and playing how Seve was 20 years ago. It, he's even younger than Tiger. Tiger's sort of the young phenom at 23 years of age, Sergio at 19. I think the younger players are playing a lot better now because they hit the ball so much further. It's always been easier for the young guys because they haven't learned to miss yet, we always say that. And when I was a young guy playing and holding all these putts and doing everything easy, the older guys would say, then I wait till he learns to miss. But the young players now hit the ball so much further than we ever did. I mean, they fly at 300 yards every time. So the younger players, I think, the stronger players have a bit more of an advantage with the game today than perhaps they used to. 
Ian Baker Finch talking to David Bashir there on his roller coaster ride through professional golf. And tomorrow night, in the second part of that interview, Ian tells us about life after his 1991 Open victory and the future of Aussie golf. Ups and downs is Australia's Ian Baker Finch. This weekend, he took part in the Masters of the Amateurs Tournament on the Gold Coast in an effort to get his game back on track. During the event, David Bashir sat down with Baker Finch to gain an insight into the former British Open champion's life. Tonight, in the second part of our special interview, he speaks of his plans for the future and which Australian golfers he thinks have the potential to one day win a major. I think Aaron Baddeley is certainly the one that everyone's saying is, has the opportunity and the ability to be the next uh, superstar. I think right now of the players that are already professional and performing well, Stuart Appleby to me seems to be the player that has, has performed the best over the last three years. He's won three times on the US tour. Uh, as you say, Jared Mosley has done very well on the European tour. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of guys like that, Robert Allenby, Craig Spence, uh, around that age. Uh, Kim Felton just coming through now but as a youngster I'd have to go with Aaron Baddeley Adam Scott's a very good player as well I mean there's so many guys that are we haven't the, the public haven't even heard of or been aware of yet that, that have that ability and just because they're brilliant at 18 or 19 or 20 and you haven't heard of someone doesn't mean that at the age of 25 that that someone you haven't heard of may all of a sudden click and find out how to do it so there's certainly a greater depth now in Australian golf. I would say there'd be 20 or 30 guys under the age of 25 that could be major champions down the track. Um, for guys that are getting close, as you say, Craig Parry has the ability. Uh, Pete Senior never, didn't win a major and, you know, he just turned 40 the other day, so maybe it's, it's getting a bit late for him, but you never know. He's got a lot of ability and, and tenacity there. Uh, I think Stuart Appleby and Robert Allenby would have to be the next couple of guys that you'd, you'd look to. Greg Chalmers too. I mean, uh, and this year Matthew Goggin has done extremely well on the Nike Tour. Uh, he'll probably end up leading that and he'll be on the US Tour next year. Uh, there's a bunch of guys. It's hard to say, you know, just one. But mm. Stuart's obviously the guy that's performed the best over the last three years. I have to ask you the question, what, what, what's the <coughs> highlights of your career? They might, obviously might be obvious, but how do mm. they compare with, with highlights of your life as well? Uh, I think I'm pretty evenly balanced, actually. I think that's why I've been able to uh, get through the, you know, the rise to achieving at a very high level and then the slide back down and achieving at a pretty low level there with the golf for a while. Um, uh, the birth of my two kids, Haley and Laura, was uh, a standout point. Um, obviously, as far as golf goes, winning the British Open. Winning the Australian Masters, the Australian PGA in Australia were big ones. Winning in the States, uh, playing in the Australian team that won the World Championship in, in 1990. That'd be the, the career best. Uh, one thing missing, I, I think, is an Australian Open title. Uh, I've been second a couple of times and good opportunities to win. But if I was going to make a really concerted effort to come back, that'd be the one that uh, I'd be trying to come back for. Within reason, do you still think about major championships and, 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 and perhaps winning an Australian Open? Is that mm, still in your thoughts? Yes. Yes. Um, the game's still there. I've just got to figure out the right program to 